And we have some sad news to report this morning. The death of a Louisiana political legend, former Lieutenant Governor Jimmy Fitzmorris. He passed away overnight at the age of 99. Fitz, as he was known, redefined the office of the Lieutenant Governor in the 1970s and was a lifelong ambassador for the state and the city. Meg Ferris takes a look back. To people of a certain age, Jimmy Fitzmorris was Mr. New Orleans. Even decades after he left public office in 1980, he could walk into a room and would know everyone there. Or if he didn't, he'd strike up a conversation and make new friends by the time he left. His public service career began with three terms on the New Orleans City Council in the 50s and 60s. But it was as the state's lieutenant governor in the 1970s where he likely made the biggest impact. As a natural-born salesman, he made economic development a key part of his job. Edwin Edwards was the governor at that time, and I went and sat down and talked to him, and I said, Governor, I don't want to be somebody that's just going to be a ceremonial person. I want a real responsibility in government. In addition to leading a team that brought the chemical and car industries to the state, Fitzmorris also made growing the state's tourism industry a priority. His outgoing personality helped. Your business is built uh, on, on one thing, your personal character and your personal reputation. That's what it's all about. People do business with people who they have a comfortable feeling with. If they have a comfortable feeling with you, they're going to do business with you. If they don't, they aren't. While Fitzmaurice touted wins as lieutenant governor, his story in politics is also marked by great losses. I, I learned that, that you, you never quit. You never quit. And you got to do it right away. You got to get back up and say, I'm going. He ran for mayor twice in the 60s and lost. Ten years later, he ran for governor and lost by 2,000 votes he said were stolen by voter fraud. A lengthy court fight didn't change the results. You know, there was a great entertainer in our town whom you know, and every time he'd had a show, he said, you know, Jimmy Fitzmaurice is a man who could have been. He said he could have been governor, he could have been mayor, and he could have been indicted in the atmosphere in which he worked. But he didn't make any of those things. Would I have loved to be mayor? Absolutely. Would I have made a commitment? Absolutely. Do I think I'd have done a great job? Absolutely. How about governor? Oh, I think I'd have done a great job as governor. After leaving politics, Fitzmaurice formed his own consulting business and built on relationships he had formed over 35 years. They were friendships he made not only in politics, but on the railroad. When he was 18, he was hired as a messenger boy on the Kansas City Southern Line and later held the job of vice president. In that job, in politics, and in the private sector, he was always ready to give his time, advice, or help to a friend. It's one reason he kept working well into his 90s. When the Lord looks at you, he doesn't know whether, you want, want to know whether you're a governor, a lieutenant governor, or a mayor, or a city councilman. He wants to know what you did for other people and what life is all about. That's what he wants to know. And Jimmy's wife, Gloria, died in 1995. He is survived by their daughter, Lisa, her husband, Bruce, and their two daughters, who gave Jimmy several great-grandchildren. Yeah, Jimmy was uh, 99 years old. He would have turned 100 in November. And on a personal note, uh, I, I was a friend of Jimmy Fitzmore, as we, we would talk all the time. He'd call me regularly, and uh, he was a wealth of knowledge. We'd go to lunch uh, oftentimes, and it's just like, he was just the greatest guy, and mm -hmm. just a wealth of knowledge. Oh, well, he lived a long, beautiful life, but sorry for his loss. And, and our condolences to his family. Definitely. They, they have lost the best.